Hello, today we will be talking about how to set up a structured experimentation program for your product. So this talk is for people who are building products, who are working in product teams. Um, but to make it a bit more specific, it's for people who want to experiment within that digital product that they are working on, but they don't know exactly where to start. They don't have a clear view of the direction that they're heading. Or maybe they're testing already, but they're still missing the bigger picture, the, the direction that they need to work towards, the overarching goal that they need to optimize towards. Or when you think about experimentation, you solely think about A-B testing. And I want to show you that there are also other methods for experimentation to validate the ideas that you might have um, that you want to test within your product. So in the coming 20 minutes or so, I would like you to show you a, a way of working to help you identify the biggest opportunities and pain points of your users and the biggest opportunities within the product. And then next to that, help you to structure your ideas and experimentation efforts to address those opportunities that you have found within the product. But first, who am I? Why should you listen to me? Uh, my name is Dennis. I live in the Netherlands. I've been working within digital marketing for about 10 years currently. Um, started within online advertising, uh, made a move to web analytics, and eventually uh, made a step towards zero A-B testing and experimentation. Um, but before I went to A-B testing, uh, the focus was already on data-driven optimization, um, testing new stuff within the channels, uh, within the websites, and um, trying out stuff and see what works and what doesn't work. And currently I'm working at Online Dialogue, an agency based in the Netherlands, award-winning agency uh, focused on validating ideas. Our motto is also validation within every organization. And at Online, at online Dialogue we help small, medium and large companies with setting up experimentation programs and building experimentation cultures. And in my role as experimentation consultant, um, I've already helped uh, several product teams to set up uh, experimentation programs, run experimentation programs, and validate the ideas within the organization to see what works and what doesn't work. And what I often see when experimentation programs start is they, they start like this. They have an idea within the organization, comes from someone within the team or outside of the team, uh, they write the hypothesis, they do the test, they get the results back, and then someone else has an idea, they do another test, uh, write another hypothesis, do another analysis, and they keep going like this for a while. They do multiple tests, multiple directions, multiple ideas, and of course this is a good way to start because they're getting in the flow of experimentation, they're getting in the flow of writing hypothesis, and they're trying out new stuff, um, and they're going towards a validation way of working. However, it's not the most efficient route to their desired outcome because maybe one test has a clear impact on an overarching goal. Uh, another test is maybe a bit smaller um, and they're missing the direction of what test do we need to focus on, uh, which one has uh, a prio over another test, for example. And they might also miss out on overarching learnings. So let's say three of the tests on the left-hand side are focused on the same hypothesis or same psychological te tactic. By combining those tests, those test results, uh, and doing an analysis on a higher level, on uh, opportunity level, you could uh, draw meta-learnings from multiple tests um, and get insights that the rest of the company can do something also with. Hi. This is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. If you'd like to connect with hundreds of experimenters from around the world, consider joining our Slack channel. You can find the link in the description. Now back to the episode. So to tackle those issues, um, we work via the Opportunity Solution Tree framework. This was introduced by Teresa Torres in her book, Continuous Discovery Habits. Um, it was mainly introduced for product discovery uh, uh, projects, but you can also use this for the more delivery optimization part of product, um, product development. And that's what I want to show you. 
in this presentation is to show you how we use this framework within our experimentation efforts um, and how we structure our experimentation programs for digital products. And the framework is built up at the top. We start with our goal, with our desired outcome, what are we working towards. Below that are the opportunities that we've drawn from research. And below that are the solutions, the ideas, the tests that we're doing, the experiments. So let's build the uh, opportunity up step by step together. And then hopefully at the end, you have the capacity to build your own opportunity solution tree for your product. So step one, we start with our desired outcome at the top of our opportunity solution tree. This is the goal that we're working towards as a team. Um, and this is how we show that we're driving business value. So it's a leading indicator of the team's success. But it doesn't just drive business value. We also have users that we want to make happy. So I like to personally look at a um, combined goal. So a goal that combines the business goal with the user goal. On the one hand, business is how we show that we drive business value. It's our right to exist. It's our right to serve our customer. But on the other hand, we have users that we want to make happy with the product that we're building. So our product goal lies at the intersection of these two. And when we define this product goal, we like to have it um, defined as it measures customer behavior within our product. That is so that if we do a test, if we do an experiment, we can measure if the behavior of the customer, if the user is changing, and in turn, if that is driving our business value. So to make it a bit more specific, let's look at an example. Let's say we're building a fitness app. Let's say we're building a fitness app where people can follow workouts. They can track workouts within the app. Um, it starts free, but the more they use the workouts, the more they follow workouts, the more they are going to pay for the app. So a logical business goal will be to, for example, increase monthly recurring revenue from the app. However, just focusing on this goal would, could um, make um, good result in having a lot of short-term focus. We could increase prices. Short-term, we increase the monthly recurring revenue. However, users won't be all too happy with increasing prices. So on the other hand, we have the user goal. They want to improve their fitness, their overall health. Um, and that's something that we want to provide them with, with the app. So a good product goal in this case uh, that lies at the intersection of both of these could be to increase user engagement with fitness activities within the app. The more the users act, uh, act or engage with the, the fitness activities, with the workouts, the more they will improve their fitness and overall health. And on the other hand, the more monthly recurring revenue we will be generating because users will start to be paying more and more. So now we have a clear goal at the top of our opportunity solution tree, a clear desired outcome that we're working towards with our team. And now we want to see how can we reach this goal? What are the opportunities that are lying below this that um, can help us reach that goal that we've just defined? So the opportunities is where we create the customer value. These are their customer needs, the pain points uh, or the desires that drive that desired outcome. And most importantly, these are backed by research, by data, for example, or customer feedback. This is important because we don't want to have the ideas from ourselves. We want to have ideas that are coming directly from our users or that we've backed by um, solid research that we've done. So how do we find the opportunities? Of course, talking to our customers is a good starting point. Um, at Online Dialog, we use a bit more of an extensive research approach where we look at different sources and combine the insights from those sources to come up with the most promising opportunities. So as I said, we start with talking to customers, looking at uh, customer feedback, talking to customer service because they're talking to our users, seeing what's, uh, what questions they get. But we also look at competitors. What are they doing? What are the market best practices? Um, what, is, uh, um, what is the baseline within the market? Maybe there are certain features that users are used to have within certain products. 
we look at the data, what do we see in web analytics? What do we see in the quantitative behavior of our users happening? Where are they dropping off? Where are they entering? Um, and what are they uh, using? And what aren't they using within our product? We look at experiments that have already been done, if they've already been done. What have we already validated? What have we already gotten back from, for example, usability research or um, uh, other experiment A-B tests that we've done in the past? We look at scientific research. Have there, any, have there been any papers written on the topic uh, or um, in the industry that we're working in? Or um, are there any models uh, already been built up within the industry that we're working in? And we look at the company values. We want to make sure that all the ideas that we have, that they are in line with the company values and the direction that we're heading uh, with the company as a whole. So by looking at these different sources, combining the insights from different sources, we try to find the most promising opportunities for the product. So let's go back to our example of the fitness app. We have said, okay, our product goal is to increase user engagement with fitness activities within the app. And by looking at data, for example, we see that people aren't really completing the workout plans. They are lacking the motivation to complete the workout plans. By talking to our customers, doing interviews uh, and uh, reading survey responses, we see that users feel isolated and they might want to connect with others or with friends or with family within the app to see how they're comparing towards each other or to follow workouts together. And by doing competitor analysis and uh, looking at scientific research, we notice that users need guidance and support during their workouts. So now we have three solid opportunities uh, backed by research, uh, all three different directions, but they could also all three um, drive our desired outcome. So now we go to step three to come up with the solutions. And the solution is a, a way of addressing the opportunity. And of course, there are multiple ways of addressing the opportunity. So we want to make sure that we have multiple ideas below one opportunity um, to see how can we address this opportunity in the best way. And we just don't just want to implement these ideas, of course, we want to test these. We want to experiment with these. We want to validate these. So how do we come up with these solutions? Of course, if you have an opportunity, you can think of certain solutions yourself. Um, you can hold a brainstorm, and that's also what we like to do. We hold brainstorms, for example, via the one, two, four, all method. We generate ideas individually, pair up, build on those ideas. Then we pair the groups, generate and build on those ideas. And then in the end, we share the ideas with everyone and we pick the most promising ones um, to go on to the next step. Or another brainstorming method from the book Continuous Discovery Habits, generate ideas individually, share the ideas with the team, repeat step one and two, and then dot vote when you have 15 to 20 ideas. I mean, of course, there are more, multiple ways to come up with solutions, do brainstorms. Um, why we choose one of these methods because you start with generating ideas individually, which helps to give everyone room and space to come up with ideas. Um, if you invite different people from your company, different from different teams, you'd like to have different point of views um, to address an opportunity. And this also helps that if there's one person that has a lot of ideas, that they are quiet in the beginning and that gives room and space for others to also think of their ideas and pitch their ideas towards the others. So let's go back to our example. We've picked one of the opportunities that we've done the one, two, four, all method brainstorm on. We've invited people from multiple departments to get different point of views. And we said, okay, we see that users lack motivation to complete their worker plans. Let's see how we can address this opportunity within our application. And one idea was to add rewards for completing the work plans. Had a bit of gamification within the app. Another idea was to remind 
the users that they haven't finished the workout yet and that they need to, for example, do certain workouts still to complete the plan. And another idea from someone else was to show the progress tracking within the homepage of the app. So every time a user opens the app, they see how far they are within a workout and that they only need to complete, for example, 10% of the workout plan to complete it. Again, three different directions, three different solutions to, work, to the opportunity that we've um, identified. Um, and yeah, all three could possibly work or couldn't work and that's what, why we need to validate our ideas. So short recap, now we have defined our desired goal at the top of our opportunity, opportunity solution tree. It combines the business goal with the user goal. We've done our research, we've come up with a few opportunities and we've done brainstorms to come up with ideas, solutions, tests based on these opportunities. And good to mention here is that you don't need to have an extensive um, overview of this. If you have three to five opportunities defined from research and you've had a brainstorm on one of these opportunities with the first ideas, then it's already a good starting point to go on to the next step to start experimenting, to start testing. So as mentioned, these solutions are what you want to test, what you want to validate. Next is step four. Here we're going to validate the solutions and the ideas that we've generated from our brainstorm. And it's important to choose the right method. So to come back on, at the beginning when I said A-B testing is the only solution, um, well, it's not, you have multiple validation methods and A-B testing is just one of the tools in your toolbox. Uh, and it's good to be aware of that. A-B testing is a solid approach. However, it isn't always the best approach. And before you start validating, it's of course important to formulate your hypothesis. What are you going to test? When is it a success? What do you need to measure? Um, and how do you define if it's a winner or a loser or inconclusive? So what we often use is the hierarchy of evidence. Uh, it's a way of looking at all the methods that you have um, and how strong the evidence is that you're getting back from your validation method. The higher we're going up in this pyramid, the stronger the evidence is that we're getting back. Um, why is that? For example, A-B testing, we are testing in a real life scenario, we built the actual feature and we're testing 50-50. So uh, the results that come back uh, have a high level of evidence. If we're looking at user research, it could also be a good, a good validation method. However, often the sample size is a lot smaller. And for example, if you ask users what they want, uh, that's not always in line with what they actually do. So for our example, the fitness app, we've chosen one of the solutions that we came up with, the adding of rewards for completing workout plans. And now we want to validate this idea. And we've noticed that doing a B test, building this A-B test would take four sprints to build. So again, this would be a solid solution because we're getting a lot of evidence back. However, four sprints to build, and if it's then not a success is is quite wasted. So maybe we need to first look at a different validation method. Building a prototype test, clickable prototype would only take one sprint to build. Maybe a better solution, less effort, less cost to get already some insights if it's a solid solution. Or we could build an in-product survey. When people haven't completed the workout, we, the survey pops up and we ask people why they haven't completed it and if adding rewards would help them to complete their workout, would motivate them to complete that workout. It would only take half a day to set up. Um, however, as I said, we're asking people if they would like something and people don't always say what they do. It depends here what you want to choose, how much uh, room and capacity you have uh, within your backlog, within your team. And uh, another good approach could be to combine the different methods. Maybe start with a survey. If people are positive, then go towards a prototype test. And if that result is positive, then you go towards an A-B test. Because in the end, you need to build the feature. And it's always good to A-B test the feature in the end.
Now comes step five. Keep your opportunity solution tree up to date. So it's important to keep all the experiments well documented. What have you been testing? What opportunity was it focused on? Uh, maybe what page? Um, what was the psychological tactic that you were testing out? Um, what was the, the, the source of the insight that you've gathered it from? You want to share the test results and the learnings with the team and stakeholders, make everyone aware of what the result was, um, what were the learnings from it so that other people can also learn from the experiments, from the results that you've gotten back. And of course, you want to keep doing your research. Um, the opportunity space isn't a one-time static thing. Um, the more you test, the more insights you get back and you want to keep talking to your customers to make sure your opportunity solution tree evolves in time and you get a better feeling of what drives the desired outcome and how you need to address certain opportunities in certain ways. So for example, we use Airtable. We document every hypothesis, every test, every idea in in uh, Airtable, um, which enables us over time to also do analysis, not only on test level, but on opportunity level. So to give an example, we're building the fitness app. We've Next to the experiments, we have uh, documented all the opportunities that we've defined within Airtable and every experiment that we do, we tag with the opportunity that it is addressing. And in time, we can see how many experiments we've done in a certain, on a certain opportunity. And we also get back the win rate on a certain opportunity. In this case, we see that we've done 21 experiments on the users need guidance and support during workouts, but only 14% of those were a winner. And on the other hand, we've done only 14 experiments on the users lack motivation, and 40% of those, 43% of those were a winner. So this insight helps us to redirect our focus um, and also helps us prioritize our backlog. If there are multiple experiment ideas on the backlog and only one of them is focused on the top opportunity in this case, the user's lack motivation, then that would get a higher score than another opportunity that has a lower win rate because the chance that it is a winner and it is driving our desired outcome is higher. And over time, as you're validating your solutions, your opportunities and solutions will continue to evolve and you will get a better feeling of how to address a certain opportunity um, and what opportunity is driving your desired outcome. And of course, keep doing your research to optimize and um, let the opportunity space evolve if certain opportunities aren't relevant or you're not finding any winners on that, maybe you need to scrap that opportunity and maybe from research you find a new opportunity or you need to redefine the opportunity. So to conclude, five steps to build a structured experimentation program. We start with our desired outcome. We look at the business goal. We look at the user goal. We combine those and then at the intersection of those lies your product goal. We do our research, we look at different sources, we combine the insights and we define our opportunities. We hold brainstorms to come up with solutions to address those opportunities. We start with experimenting and validating the solutions that we came up with. Um, we do user research, we do data research, we do A-B tests um, and we get the results back. And we document every test that we do within a tool like Airtable, and we keep our opportunity solution tree up to date. Every time we get a test result back, we can go back to our opportunity solution tree and we can tweak and op optimize um, the opportunity solution tree itself. So that it's a living and breathing document for our product. So that in time we go from the left-hand side to random ad hoc testing towards a structured experimentation program for your product with a clear goal at the top certain opportunities backed by research and uh, tests and ideas below that. Hopefully this inspired you to use this approach yourself or in a certain way. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact me or connect with me on LinkedIn. And good luck with experimenting within your product. Hi. This is Romo Santiago from Experiment Nation. If you'd like to connect with hundreds of experimenters from around the world, consider joining our Slack channel. You can find the link in the description.